my first interview with another survivor, Kesha McDermott. She found me trying to break into a Nuka-Cola machine and um, showed me a different way. So, Kesha, can you tell us a bit about how we can make sure our water is safe for drinking? I'll try to keep it to the basics for training purposes. Oh, it's not complicated, really. Find water and strain out any big particles and chunks. Then, oil it in a pot over an open fire for a minute or two, then let it cool. Should be fine. Like, <laughs> like making tea, right? <laughs> uh-huh. You joined the responders a while ago and helped develop a program to train volunteers. So, uh, were you a survivalist prior to all of this? <laughs> you could say that. I taught high school kids. I used to talk about this very thing to them. Practical application of the sciences. It's fascinating, but... You never realize how important some things will be down the road, do you? I guess not. So if we were students of yours, what would you tell us about the world now? How can we survive? That's a good question, Dasa. Well... I would tell you all to remain calm and focus on surviving. The first thing you need to do is get yourself some clean drinking water. It's likely all you'll find is dirty water, but that's okay. We can fix it. Dirty water carries a small chance of disease and it's a bit radioactive. You'll probably survive if you drink it, but you shouldn't take that risk. It's better than toxic water or nuclear waste, though, which are both very harmful and should be boiled thoroughly first. Got that, Dutha? Yes, um, contaminated water should be boiled. Okay, that sounds easy enough. So, boiled water is safe? It's mostly safe, but still a bit radioactive. What you really want is purified water. Oh, purified water. Okay, how do I get that? You can build machines that will do it for you, and that's the most reliable way. Building them requires some space and time and plenty of materials. But... On my way up here from Watoga, I found purified water occasionally in supply caches and medical kits. <laughs> so, keep your eyes peeled. If I boil water, and that's mostly safe, aside from a teensy bit of radiation, what about tea? Most folks around here are tea drinkers, as you know. I recall many a night sipping tea on the stoop, watching lightning bugs, and reading a book in peace and quiet. Tell me that's still okay, Kesha. Oh, bless your heart. It's probably as good as boiled water anyway. Maybe even better if you add anything medicinal to it. Some survivors add all sorts of flowers and herbs to boiled water, and they swear by it. Personally, I stick with purified water. Yeah, to each their own. Hmm, okay, got it. Uh, switching tracks a bit. I know you're awfully busy with your latest research in Flatwoods. Can you explain that a bit? <laughs> of course! I'm testing local, natural water over time in Appalachia. Gathering data, monitoring the radiation and contamination levels, and all of that. I analyze the data in my lab to look for long-term trends and use those trends to determine how we can use the water right now. We use the water for more than just drinking, you know. It feeds our plants, which feed our animals, so we need to know how things are changing. You got a lot of work cut out for you. I'm glad you joined the responders. Data sounds invaluable. <laughs> it is. I've integrated the data collection and research into the Responders Survivors Volunteer Program as well. I am still a teacher, after all. Wow. 
it, and there you have it, folks. Thanks for talking with us today, Kesha. And thanks for showing us all how to live a little safer. Mm -hmm. Class dismissed. <laughs>